Hello everybody, we are live here on YouTube and we are early today. It is Tuesday afternoon and I have a big event that I'm doing tonight. Not a big event, but I've been invited to an event downtown Tampa uh, and I'm excited to, to learn about some of the technology that will be at the event. But thanks for joining me early. We are having a great lesson tonight about fat cells and when I hear folks say, hey, my fat cells are emptying just fine and I don't seem to have any loose skin, but why is my friend having the fat cell emptying where I get all of this saggy skin? Uh, other people say, hey, my fat cells are not emptying enough. Why, how can I be on this ketogenic diet and not have any uh, weight loss over the last two months? What am I doing wrong? Uh, here's my numbers over the last uh, 48 hours. I have fasted since Sunday. Uh, it is the hardest part of my day, just so you know, by the time I usually go live two hours from now, I feel a ton better, but uh, that glucose 74, ketones 2.1, uh, and again, yes, I do fast every week. You're welcome to join me on that journey. I think it does help people with accountability, but also um, to know that this is how I keep my, well, we're going to talk about that, or how I keep my fat cells doing a, a less, <laughs> a less terrible job <laughs> of filling more than they should. Uh, and I've had a season where I know this physiology about these two important words, making fat called lipogenesis, and then getting rid of fat or losing weight called lipolysis. Uh, specifically, when you're tuning into the ketogenic diet, looking at carnivore, or trying to repair your brain with a ketogenic state, Yes, uh, you're going to have to understand some physiology about fat cells. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk also about a couple of uh, things we're trying to do as a channel, and, and we'll get to those in just a minute. Thank you, everybody, for telling me where you're from. We've had some wonderful new people show up at our, our Tuesday morning meeting here in Tampa. Uh, we meet at the bowling alley. The bowling alley in Tampa is called the Pin Chasers. And we meet every Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock. So if you're in the Tampa area and you're looking for some support on the ketogenic diet, it's free. Join the, the team and show up to the bowling alley. And if you did this morning, you would, got, you would have done a check-in that I hope to tie into the end of these slides. Let's get into the slides because I think it is a difficult lesson uh, that I, I hope I can land for you. <laughs> Let's see how I do. All right. Uh, we are going to use this, um, this setup today because... I'm going to need to draw on these slides. So let's make sure I've got it all organized. All right. So uh, this is the most beautiful fat cell that I could find. <laughs> yes, fat cells are actually not just these dead things in your body that hold fat. They are alive. I want to point out a couple of things. First of all, every fat cell has a blood supply. Uh, so that blood is delivering things to the fat and then it's emptying things. There should be an in to the fat cell and an out to the fat cell that this Mr. Insulin is a representation of him being healthy. Healthy Mr. Insulin talks a lot to your fat cells. Um, this central part is the place where the adipose or the fat is stored. Uh, but I do not want you to miss these beautiful, beautiful little uh, fellas there called mitochondria. Because yes, your, your fat cells do require energy. Uh, and finally, the last thing I like to point out is this is the nucleus the brains of how your fat cell is actually functioning. So um, they are not boring, <laughs> but they are terrible to try and draw. And even if you like did an actual histology stain of a fat cell, I mean, it's not even interesting then. It just looks like an empty ball. <laughs> so this is the best looking one I could find. And we are going to use that to teach about what's really going on and why do some people's fat empty out in a great, graceful way? Why do some people's fat cells empty out massively in a quick way? Uh, and then they, they call in saying, Doc, I, I'm losing too much weight on your ketogenic diet. How do I not do that? Uh, and then how do some people leave behind a bunch of extra tissue when others don't? Uh, that has everything to do with the chemistry these fat cells are living in. And if you're looking at most of the people I talk to on a day-to-day -day basis, they're coming to this story with a season, and sometimes that season's been a couple decades of a high insulin state. So this is the first uh, cell we're going to talk about, or the first uh, delivery we're going to talk about to this fat cell. Uh, this is a lipoprotein. I specifically picked a VLDL if you've been studying me long enough. 
This means that it's delivering fat to different parts of the body. And one of those places it delivers fat to, yeah, is your fat cells. So as the energy leaves that lipoprotein and goes into the fat cell, it can only do that uh, in the presence of insulin. Insulin allowed that lipoprotein to exit its energy and put it into the fat cell. Uh, this happens all day long, all night long. The other place that insulin is, the other fuel that insulin is letting into your fat cell is sugar. Glucose is required. Uh, it's part of the, uh, what helps you build or destroy fat. Uh, again, the building of fat is called lipogenesis, and you're building it from fatty acids, which are represented by these uh, things that are really triglycerides in my cartoons, but they're, think of them as fatty acids. And then those, those red squares at the top of the fatty acids are actually glucose. So you're taking glucose and fat, putting them together inside your fat cells. That is lipogenesis. That is adipose. That is getting fat. That is, we have all kinds of uh, terrifically unsexy names for it, like, uh, you know, fat and blubber and that uh, Dunlap <laughs> and the wiggly part on your arm. Um, and when people are trying to lose weight, it's the fat cells they're trying to empty and lose. And there is a very special chemistry set that's required to do that. All right, so we're going to take the first setting. The first uh, place where most of us have come from is a high carb setting. Um, that high carb setting, again, it bathes this cell called a fat cell in a chemistry set that can be otherwise called your endocrine system. It can be called your fat based hormones. It can be called your fuel ener you know, your energy uh, equation. Um, but it means at all times there is energy that goes into the fat cell and then there's going to be energy that comes out. So this is the in uh, lane and this is the out lane. Uh, when the equation on the inside, meaning the influx, is greater than the outflux, guess what? Those fat cells grow. This big old belly that's holding the fat, it gets larger and larger and larger. And then the body says, make me some more fat cells and you will put out some blood vessels and connective tissue and you will make more. In a high, high carbohydrate setting, uh, you'll notice Mr. Insulin is pretty angry right here. He's got a flame around him. He is in a high inflammatory state, a high insulin state. And it has made this energy influx, meaning the amount of glucose that can get into this fat cell, that arrow is very large. That's, there is nothing hardly standing in the way. There is plenty of insulin to, um, to assist this glucose into the fat cell. And the door is like a swinging saloon door. It hardly takes any energy or any uh, uh, change in the body to get this, this sugar into that fat cell. Now, this is supposed to represent the fatty acids. So actually, it's these three strings here that are the fatty acids. Uh, and again, the size of this arrow is nice and big. In a high carbohydrate setting, that means a high insulin setting, the door into the fat cells is very easy. So our influx, very easy. Our outflux um, is, you will notice, a very tiny little arrow over here. That tiny arrow is because the door out has to be um, um, closed when the indoor is so wide open. So in this setting, the, the net uh, effect for this fat cell is that you hardly have anything leaving the cell while you have a major in, uh, influx of both the uh, fat strings of energy and the glucose and the sugar strings of energy. So um, I, I don't think I needed to point out a menu of a high carb setting because most of us have been there. But the comparison is what I look for. Um, and, and I know that the thumbnail said uh, Ozempic, but I compare Ozempic to my patients who come in and said, Doc, I've been overweight for years. I'm hardly eating anything. I cannot seem to lose weight no matter what. Uh, and I call it a starvation state. Uh, it's not just me. It's actually a setting where the calories have been rather robust and the chemistry that's been manipulating those calories, well, it's done this. It has over time closed the doors to this fat cell for so long that 
it's like a default by now. The, the exit door is blocked. So you decrease the amount of glucose you're eating, you decrease the amount of fat you're eating. So the amount of intake and influx into this fat cell is rather small compared to what it's been, but it's still bigger than what the exit is allowing. The exit door is still so tightly closed because of years and years of high insulin that even though you're eating like a few snippets of food, I believe you 100% you can't lose weight. It's because of the chemistry set you've created and this blocked door to your fat cell. So this fat cell ain't letting go of any of its energy until you fix something. So let me be more specific. This setting of high insulin is what happens when people go on Ozempic. So I mean that in Ozempic is a powerful suppressant of appetite. It also does some pretty funky things to your brain to not want food. So there's the, I mean, there's the peristalsis, which, um, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, the peristalsis, which means how food moves along your gut, that is dramatically dropped when you're on Ozempic. There is also the, the neuroendocrine process where you do not want food. They just they don't want food. And they are frequently coming to this drug, not because they've had this graceful ease of losing weight, but because they're stuck. They can't lose weight. And so the endocrine process to their fat cells is a blocked door. It cannot open the door until you fix the chemistry. And that does not happen instantly. Now, people with Ozempic lose weight, but I'm about to show you why they lose weight without much autophagy. Now let's go back to this other scene here. Um, all right, so Ozempic um, is a setting where, well, let me explain the other places. So Ozempic is one of those, and I put that on the thumbnail because people write in saying, am I starving myself with Ozempic? And the answer is, well, how long have you been in it? And tell me about the way the weight is coming off. And when they say, I have these layers of skin that are there now, is that ever going to come off? I'm like, you got to change the chemistry in order to get that to reabsorb. So the other places that they induce a starvation mode is they, they eat only protein. And I mean that as opposed, they eat only protein because it has no fat. When they leave out the fat associated with the protein, it is a diff, again, it's a different chemistry set. It is not the kind of chemistry set that will open up this door uh, in, a, in an easy way. Um, the, the next uh, just classic, um, failure to lose weight are the people who their overall calorie intake is very low, but they graze all day long. And every time they eat, they stimulate insulin. So they may only have 500 calories a day, which is a really low amount of calories, but their brain is saying, we are doomed. We are starving. It is really a starvation chemistry they're inducing, and they are not opening up the fat door. They are not accessing this really heavy supply of energy inside the fat because this hormone of, of insulin took over and is still winning. Uh, other places that I see people in a starvation mode is frequently they have been to the ketogenic diet. They did it right the first time where they had a bunch of fat at first. They listened to what we said saying, eat a bunch of fat, eat as much as you want. That first phase of keto really is, it feels like gluttony. Uh, but they are able to have fat come in and really still have fat go out. But the second time they come to the ketogenic diet, they say, I'm going to skip to that part where I just do time restricted eating. And they don't quite lower the carbs as much as they should. Uh, again, the stepwise process of getting the right chemistry set is what we talk about. It's what I teach in that keto continuum book, workbook. Uh, if you've taken my online course, consistently keto. It is the specific steps in the right order that really allow this uh, chemistry set to manipulate your fat cells uh, in the way you want them to open the exit door. So the starvation mode is very low amounts of resources going into the fat cell and you really haven't changed the chemistry enough to open the exit door. And that is not autophagy. That is a lot of skin uh, remaining or, um, well, it's a lack of autophagy. You just don't reabsorb that connective tissue. Uh, you don't um, decrease the number of fat cells. You don't remove tissue. Uh, you fall into the bucket of people that we've said for years, once you make a fat cell, you have it forever. 
That's true if you do not lower the insulin and raise these fat-based hormones first. So in a lower insulin state, this is what we promote here on the keto on my channel and what I really try to, I try to steer people away from using Ozempic, not just, not because it doesn't work, it does work, but it works in a way that you are losing more as much protein as fat or a, a much higher amount of the protein in your body, muscle mass in your body, and you are not taking this fat cell and turning it into a garbage, you know, throwing it out, the, removing it. You are just emptying it and it remains there. Uh, so the weight gain when they go off of it is, is terrible. So anyway, let's go back to a low insulin state. Uh, low insulin state means that, um, yeah, the carbohydrates you're pulling in are practically zero. You have 20 total carbohydrates or less. When you do that, you get Mr. Insulin down over the course of about six or eight days. This is happening at the same time that you are increasing or intaking a bunch of fat. So you'll notice that because this insulin changed, now your exit door to your fat cell is open. And in the people who are able to get on the ketogenic diet uh, and lose the weight, they are, the, the naysayers are right. The first week of a ketogenic diet, you're really losing a bunch of water. It's because you lowered the amount of glucose in your circulation and that lowers the blood pressure and it lowers the part, you, the salt. You, you need to replace those electrolytes over that first week or you will have significant symptoms of muscle cramps and the keto flu and not feel good because your body's not used to that. But the major amount of weight loss in that first week is water weight. It is not emptying fat cells. You are in that week where you are taking your insulin from a high insulin state to a low insulin state. And the way you're doing that is you're adding fat to your chemistry set. By doing that, yes, fat is actually probably going into your fat cells that week, but during that time, you are finally, finally lowering the hormone that allows the exit door to these fat cells to open. And when you look back at how well someone loses weight on the ketogenic diet, it has to do with the size of this arrow relative to the size of that arrow. And like I said, the first week of a ketogenic diet, this arrow goes from, you know, about, about I would say, this size of an arrow, uh, so kind of about 50% of what that's at, uh, and it gets larger. A larger amount of fat is going in the fat cell. But now, after especially a week of, uh, of really sticking to low carbohydrates, 20 total carbohydrates or less, you will now have... Um, a much bigger arrow for exiting uh, your fat cell and getting that empty. So the net effect for, a, for fat is now moving through your fat cell. It comes in and it goes out. It comes in and it goes out. Now, what we are depending on is that the exit door is larger than the intake door, but you could not get the exit door to open until you bathed that body in a high fat setting, low carbohydrate setting, which really reduced that insulin. When they skip this step, they do not lose fat the same way as the rest of us. And unfortunately, when pa I had a gal come this morning to the support group saying, it is my second time around. Why, why can't I produce ketones? Why are my ketones so terrible? And I'm like, it's the chemistry. You have to, you have to lower the insulin. And if you come to, our, to this ketogenic state with a broken um, metabolism, which is most of us, it means insulin is what usually broke it. And to reset this, you must have that week or two of a high fat setting. And they were like, but I want to get to the weight loss. I wanted to skip to the weight loss. I'm like, I'm sorry, darling. You spent too many years with high insulin. You cannot skip this step if you want autophagy, if you want that production of ketones. It's why. Um, when I look at ways that I reset a bad weekend or uh, like over Thanksgiving and then my birthday, I didn't actually have birthday cake on my birthday. I did really good this year, but I've made mistakes. I have plenty of times where I eat things that I shouldn't. And if I am in a habit that is not healthy and that I'm like, I'm going the wrong direction, I'll do that silly experiment that I did in the spring, which is take a fistful of, of uh, MCT tablets for about five days. And it bursts my ketones up I have a ton of ketones, my appetite gets suppressed, I can feel my metabolism flexing, and now I have a lower insulin state again. 
and I can really reignite that rather quickly by biohacking it instead of just saying, okay, I need, because the problem isn't that I don't like high fat food, it's that I get distracted and I stop, I don't eat, I don't eat like I should because I was a little too busy. So here's what a menu looks like at a low insulin state. And notice that this, this um, arrow is smaller than this one. So they are still having a net weight loss. It's just not, it's not robust. <laughs> They're, I mean, you have people say, I'm back on this ketogenic diet, but I really am only losing a couple of pounds a month. And I'm saying you got this arrow too close to this arrow. What they're usually doing is they're eating high fat. That's right. That's how you keep that insulin low. I often hear about it in the beef and butter folks. And that isn't bad. It is a great way to lower insulin. But beef and butter, it is very tasty. And they often overeat it. I often hear about this very small delta. This change in weight is very slight when people are using time-restricted eating on a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet. And they are trying to put the food into a certain amount of hours, but they're still being a little bit gluttonous. <laughs> they're having too much volume of food. And the change, the, the process is uh, what the fat going in and the fat going out are practically the same. So they're not really losing weight. So you're like, well, doc, how do I lose weight? How do I lose weight? And then I mention something that really ticks them off because they say, that's not what you said at the beginning of this diet. I've been watching you forever and you told me I didn't have to care about that. And this is where I mention, no, 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 your, your endocrine system is awake. Your body is much healthier. You've now got the process and you are primed to lose weight. You can do this. Your fat cells are ready for you to do what everybody else is doing or the people who've been failing for years and they're, they're flipping into the starvation mode. But now when you do it, the slightest amount of effort in the right direction is going to give you a profound weight loss as long as you primed these fat cells like this. Let me show you. All right, so here is the final step. Okay, so a low insulin state um, where you now lose weight. So the other one was a low insulin state where you were kind of at that stable weight or maybe, maybe you're not losing weight <laughs> and maybe even you're gaining weight. Uh, if you have opened this door, this was step one, you had to get this done first. If your fat cell has been in an, a, what we call keto adapted, a fat adapted state, the door to getting out is now unlocked and ready. So now it is a matter of what goes in versus goes out is going to be um, whether or not you lose weight. So the reason that sardines do such a great job for many people on the ketogenic diet, they've been keto for a while, doc, I've been keto for a while, and I say, do this 72-hour challenge. Take in the, um, those, that can of sardines, and that starts hour number one. And now I want you to count 72 hours, and I don't care how many cans of sardines you have. You can have as many as you want. You can wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and eat all you want, as long as it's just that can of sardines. Because what's happening is you have the endocrine system to support this wild science experiment. By putting in high fat, low pro, or high fat, high protein, no carbohydrates and sardines, uh, you are going to make sure the door is empty. You are going to move fat. And well, the, those other endocrine, endocrine hormones that are built from fat, and I'm talking about testosterone and estrogen and even cortisol and vitamin D, these are all part of how you feel satiated. You feel full. So when I say, yep, go eat this can of sardines and you have to eat one on the first hour and you have to eat one on the 72nd hour and you can fill as many cans of sardines as you want in the middle. But with the rare exception of somebody who has super food addicted, who eats like, oh, 12 cans of sardines in a day, you have a problem if you're eating 12 cans of sardines in a day. Uh, they are able to decrease the carb. That was always the part that when you're on low carb, the glucose going into that fat cell is very little. But to get the fat to be very little, the volume of food needed to decrease. And that is really one of the reasons the sardine fast works so well in your ketogenic patients. They can ignite the fat loss again. They can move fat out through that uh, fat cell because what's going in is very little compared to what's 
uh, exiting out the back door. Uh, they also feel good. When you look at those, that, the chemistry of that starving patient, it, they feel awful. Their brain is sad. They have their mental uh, uh, focus and resilience and cognition are all in the toilet because this, they do not have access to fat. And that is a huge part of the success on not only a ketogenic diet, but just any healthy brain restoring diet. It needs to have the mobility of fat. And fat is always going in that cell. Whether or not it goes out is dependent on your, your insulin. You want to see the fastest change of, yeah, no fats going in because you're not eating anything um, and only fat is going out. And that's when you add fasting. And I don't use the word fasting until you have 36 or more hours of fasting. I'm on this show tonight, 48 hours fasted, and my ketones were able to flex and my glucose was able to drop. Uh, and I, I know that I emptied a couple of fat cells that well, they probably got <laughs> added. They were filled over the last week because there were times where I couldn't get all, I, couldn't, I just didn't eat before sunset. I, I couldn't follow the rules as well as, well, I know I should, but I, I'm, I'm human and didn't do it that way. So this is the part that I'm trying to get at is when I'm trying to explain this to people, uh, like the gal who showed up this morning saying, that's my second time around keto. Why am I not having any success? Why can't I lose this weight? Why do I feel terrible? Why are my ketones in the drink? Well, I know just from the way she presented that somewhere on her timeline or her history, she's made too much insulin. So she has a history of making too much insulin. And if she, want, she wants to get 15 pounds off, if she wants to burn fat, she wants to lose the fat, and she wants to preferentially lose the fat, not the protein, we know that her insulin has to be dropped. Well, she came back into this state where she was eating way more carbs than she should. She was really being rather gluttonous during her time restricted eating, a very common, common story. She didn't really call it gluttonous because she's like, I don't think I'm eating that much. But when you look at how quickly insulin rises in somebody who has had insulin resistant, she was filling her fat cells, people. Uh, so if she was going to empty her fat cell, and that is where this, this a very large, big emptying arrow here, uh, well, then her insulin needed to be like between zero and five first thing in the morning. I mean, that would be a baseline insulin. When you look at people who empty it about as well as they fill it, maybe they've got a slight delta in the emptying section. Well, their arrow is, is not nearly as robust as, uh, as the first one, but their morning fasting insulin is not terrible. It's like seven. That's not terrible but it's not the massively widened fat cell that's, uh, that's, that's the first example. And if, the, by golly, their fat cell, their insulin has been resistance, or they've been snacking throughout the day, or they always eat at seven o'clock at night, and they wonder, gee doc, I can't understand why my fat cells aren't emptying. Why can't I lose weight like that one girl on your show where she had autophagy? And it's because, well, she didn't take Ozempic. She really has this tiny, fairly little measurable uh, state of an exit in her fat cell, and it's because her insulin is controlling things. And here's where the real kicker is. So how do you tell? At home, how do you know which of these fat cells you have? Measuring insulin is not the right answer, uh, but studying your morning fasting glucose, that does deliver on this. That morning fasting glucose of 70, well, I know that is absolutely in a sign of low insulin. And I'm talking, well, best way to check it is a continuous glucose monitor because I can't feel the difference between when my morning glucose is 70 versus 80. Now, I, because I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor for several months, I know the behavior that's associated with this slight uptick in my morning fasting sugars it means that out of the seven days, two of them I fast, maybe three of them I fast, um, but the other days I push my eating window too late at night or I have too many tomatoes. <laughs> Again, not the biggest sin in the world, but it's really a fruit and there's lots of sugar in them. I mean, not lots of sugar, but sh for me, an insulin resistant person, um, boy, before you know it, my morning fasting glucoses are no longer in the 70s. They're in the 80s. And God forbid that these folks who've been keto in the past and they come back to a ketogenic diet and they check their morning glucose and it might be 95, 
but their ketones at the same time, their ketones are 0.3 over and over and over again. And they're like, I don't know, doc, something's wrong. It's not working for me. I'm like, no, your fat cells have rule. And when you look at the biggest predictor of how to get those rules under your control, under your di dictatorship, it is that you need the morning fasting glucose to be much closer to 70 than it is to 100. Uh, or between 90 and 100, your insulin's too high. And unfortunately, it feels the same. Um, so when I look at what is the summary of how do we get from starving uh, to autophagy, the, the number one most important part of how well you can, can shift this is, um, are you coming, I mean, again, most of the people watching this video or listening to this uh, podcast are <laughs> saying, but I've had troubles with my weight. I used that ketogenic thing and now it, and it worked then. But you have a history of being insulin resistant. Is insulin resistant. In those people, if you're looking at the starving mode and what happens to their body holding on to protein, holding on to that connective tissue, and not letting the fat flow out of their fat cells, uh, it's because they have a high insulin. And maybe not as bad as it used to be, but they have a history of it. That history lesson haunts them. Insulin resistant to reverse it means months and months and months of not binging, of not producing a ton of insulin out your uh, beta cells. When I look at autophagy, they lower the insulin first. Uh, you must do that in order to give your, your fat cells the privilege of opening their exit door. And the difference between starving and autophagy type of fat loss is really how big are your arrows in this in this um, equation. Uh, how many carbs are going in? Oh, they're on a ketogenic low, low carb diet. Okay, fine. Well, now how much fat is going in? And those again are very easy things to manipulate. What is the most difficult is how well is your exit door regulated? When I look at how, how I've come to be what I think of as, yeah, an expert at really predicting when people are stuck at that high insulin state, uh, the greatest tool that we have found to get a um, to get them to understand. Uh, well, let me tell you the story of somebody from who checked in this morning. He's one of my favorite people at the at the um, morning pin chasers meeting. Uh, his name is Tom, and he was one to sign up for these ketone or for these continuous glucose monitors when when we were not very good at filling the prescriptions. We're very good at filling the prescriptions now. If you have ordered one of these CGMs from us, first of all, you should know that in the month of December, we have cut the processing fee that the clinic charges from $100 to $50. We've actually had several people report that they were able to take their prescription to their pharmacist and use their health savings account. And because you have to pay cash for these CGMs, they were able to stockpile a few CGMs for next year by emptying their health savings account. So they bought like, four months of them, and because they're paying cash. Now, you got to work this out with your pharmacist. We give you the prescription. You got to take it to your pharmacist, and you must know that no insurance company will ever, ever fill this prescription. You are using it for self-study. But Tom had filled this. He had done this many years ago, many months ago, when he filled the prescription for his continuous glucose monitor, and he said, I was so looking forward to the wild ride that I was going to see in my blood sugars. He goes, but well, I, I do what you tell me to do at least most of the time. And it was pretty boring. It was like, meh, like I just watched this flat line all the time. And what I probably didn't do as great of a job in the, this morning's uh, meeting as I will do right now is the biggest difference that Tom should have been paying attention to was uh, what was your blood sugar 20 minutes before you woke up? And of course, you don't know because you're sleeping. But when you wear a continuous glucose monitor, that morning blood sugar before you wake up, when you have done the right thing again and again, <coughs> excuse me, and again and again, that morning blood sugar stays stable and then it starts to decrease. It goes from the 90s and then it goes into the high 80s. And then after like four or five weeks of doing the right thing, now it's in, it's a 75, it's a 72. 
And then if you do a fast, and I don't mean a 10-day fast, Tom, I mean just a 48-hour fast, you're like, oh, I got blood sugars down into the, the 60s. I got blood sugars, and some people even have a warning sign that goes off. It went off at 54 this morning. You're like, how long has it been since your body has seen all of that glycogen storage empty out before you wake up in the morning? And the only way you know that is by looking at that continuous glucose monitor. It's actually one of, my, one of the best <laughs> accountability partners for me is I know what to do. I know when to look at my blood sugar. I know how to really do this. But it's that, it's that well, very prideful <laughs> hurt when my morning blood sugars, they're no longer at 75. They're at 85. Why? Because I went several days with, you know, tomatoes or, or eating late at night or, you know, not, not, you know, it's, it's five o'clock at night. I didn't eat the can of sardines. I went home, had a, you know, a hamburger and, you know, um, not even anything naughty, just, just too much food for me at 52 to be doing that. And I see it in my morning glucoses. All right, so I, I hope what this lesson has taught you is that uh, the, the um, first of all, I highly encourage folks to invest in one of those continuous glucose monitors. Again, the prescription goes to you. It goes to your, I mean, it goes to your pharmacist. You and your pharmacist work out um, how many you want to pick up at any one time. Well, the only one I write, uh, Meaningful Medicine and I write the prescription for is um, the, um, is the, um, give me a second, is the uh, Dexcom 6, Dexcom 7, excuse me. Uh, we, we do write it for Dexcom 6 if you want, but the brand name Dexcom is the one that we are, we really write this for. Um, I want to take a, a, a hot second and show you. So here's my web page. If you go to the Dr. Boz uh, favorites, um, here we go. Uh, this is where you can find that CGM. So I wanted to point out two things on our page here. Uh, one of them is the Dr. Boz favorites, which is loading here. Um, you'll see here, this is 50% off. See that nice little ribbon there? Um, I don't know if you can see my, anyway. Uh, for the month of December, you get a 50% off of that. A couple of other things from my brains course today, I did want to point out, this is the pulse oximeter that helps my, when people are looking to see, do they have sleep apnea? A pulse ox will help you. It will help you a ton, but it has to be connected to the software that really looks for apnea. And one of the brilliant things about this uh, pulse oximeter, it's probably more expensive than some of the other ones, but it's the best way to screen for sleep apnea because you could do it in your own bed. You own the four care pulse oximeter. The software comes because you buy the, 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 um, the pulse oximeter and you can test yourself three or four times. If your husband's snoring, you can test him for sleep apnea, print the printout and take it to your doctor. It is a brilliant launch of getting this problem fixed in a, in a hurry. Um, there was one other thing, um, Oh, there's the uric acid strips that I was talking about. Our Keto Mojo, we love them. Carnivore Crisp. These, again, are all the things that I, I actually use all these things. Um, here is Levels. That is the other place that sells CGM. Uh, there you can get both brands of a CGM if you want. If you don't like the Dexcom 6 or 7 and you want to use the other one, you can go to Levels to do that. They also have coaching and much more hand-holding. We want you self-studying. That's what we want to do with um, uh, that. And um, again, the, the favorites page gets you a little bit about how you also do support this channel by clicking on them. There's a, there are affiliate links with this. This is the sauna on the front top one that I have. Um, so the second thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that we've had several people say, do you offer coaching? I do not personally um, have any coaches that are on my, my staff, but I do teach um, keto leaders during the 21 day and they have their private services where they teach the Dr. Boz um, method uh, in their own companies. So Rhonda will have her website up here sooner than later. But if you're looking for a coach that teaches Dr. Boz, you want that handholding, you want that relationship um, with uh, a coach. All these gals have just done a great job at joining me on my 21 day. Their own health has been impacted. I tell people we hire coaches for attitude and their success or struggle on the ketogenic journey. 
and we uh, we teach the rest. Really uh, love all four of those gals on there. So if you're looking for a coach, that's something that we haven't had that up and running until now. We have had some great success with people clicking on our affiliate link there. Um, so if you if you want to become an affiliate, you are welcome to join us. We we paid out some pretty good um, some commissions this last month for other people sharing our products. And again, this really helps support the channel. I uh, I do really try to keep my prices as low as possible uh, and wanted to make sure that anybody who is shopping on our website knows that yes, Pucker Up is uh, out of stock, but we are hopefully a week and a half away from getting that back to you and on the market. But the other um, major thing that if you're looking to stock up in the year of 2023, I do have to raise the price. Uh, I said this in April, I didn't end up raising the price then, but I do have to do it now. Uh, our raspberry lemonade, it is, you're right, it's only $57. And if you look at the rest of the market, that's like $20 below what anybody else is selling it for. So at the end of the year, I will be raising the price of that. And I'm just trying to give you the heads up warning uh, to buy that ahead of time now. It's got a long shelf life. So if you wanna put some on the shelf for later, this is what I, uh, give my son, who's a wrestler, uh, he uses Pucker Up sometimes too, but um, oh, he is a wrestler and we mix this with cream uh, on uh, his wrestling days to get him energy, calories, and um, a quick delivery of ketones if he needs them. Uh, all right, so we are going to your questions now. So uh, let me hop over and get that page set up. Uh, and I do want to say thank you for everybody that did uh, sign up for our uh, our email list. Uh, I sent out a private message on a video this past weekend sharing a family tradition about how I've tried to teach my kids and you know s s break the cycle of using food to celebrate every occasion and how do you really do that and what are some of the psychology things that I've learned and I've tried to teach my kids who are no longer kids, they're teenagers and almost all in their 20s now. So yes, um, I'm, I'm that mom. <laughs> All right, let's go to your questions. Um, <clears throat> and then I will, I am trying to make it downtown by 5.10, so I have about 10 minutes here I can answer questions. All right, doc, Dr. Boz, how long should it take to heal inflammation? 60 days of keto, and I still fail the shin thumbprint test. Uh, so what are you burning if you're not, if not body fat in ketosis but stalled? Okay, so First of all, perfect question for this uh, for this talk. When you look at somebody who's trying to heal inflammation, number one, number one, that shin thumbprint is a very good way to see is the excess fluid in your body uh, still remarkably present. And look, I've been doing keto so eight years now, and I have only in the last like five months been able to say that most of the time my shin thumbprint is gone. I would still just have just enough volume of food in a state of ketosis. You could see my numbers week after week, but I would have just enough volume of food that I could, I would add, I would add that inflammation or add that fluid back to the, the intracellular space. Uh, when I look at head injuries for, you know, to answer your first question, how long does it take to heal inflammation? If I'm looking at a concussion, a head injury. And if it's a teenager, I know I can reverse that um, that inflammation. If they follow the rules, do everything I say, I can have them back to feeling amazing within that four to five weeks, uh, sometimes faster, but for sure by four to five weeks. But if I'm taking somebody who's been around the sun as many times as me, so they're in their 40s, 50s, you know, 60s, and they have chronic inflammation and they get a head injury. I've seen it take six or seven months because they, they're doing just what you're doing. They're smoldering. The influx to that fat cell and the exit to the fat cell are too close. In order to get the exit of the fat cell to out, out, out you know, weigh the, pardon the pun, outweigh the influx of fat, uh, you, you got to decrease the intake. So the volume of food mattered or they have to turn up the heat. They have to be in a sauna for 19 and a half minutes, four to five times a week. A cold plunge after that also stimulates that metabolism. If they are using heat uh, three times a week, it's why I like <clears throat> to push people into a sauna at their own house. 
Many times patients are coming to me and they want to lose the fat, but their access to asana or burning fat, um, well, they don't have the skill set <coughs> to do weight training on their own. Uh, they really need a coach. And honestly, when you're at that age, when you've been doing this, and you, you should really do that lifting two to three times a week until your body gets used to it, until the soreness is not a life-changing event when you tear that muscle and you can't get out of bed the next day. Well, you shouldn't do that every day. You're going to need recovery days. And I just have found that most patients, uh, they can do a sauna on their own. They can go into that sauna. They can start the timer at four minutes. They can do it for four minutes. And they stay at four minutes for a week. The next week, they're up to eight minutes. The next week, they're up to 12 minutes. They stay at 12 minutes until they really feel good at 12 minutes. But now, the exit door to their fat cells uh, is, is uh, much higher than the in entrance door. Let me just go back to this, make sure you see this. So in, in the guy who's stuck, the exit door uh, and your entrance door are the same if you're stuck, if you're stalled. And so you can increase this, uh, the exit door, you can increase this with heat. So that's what sauna is. That's what I, uh, I'm, I did not used to say this. When I wrote Keto Continuum, I, I mean, I made it, might have a sentence in the whole book about saunas. But really, the skill set to get their mitochondria developed, we want you pushing to zone two uh, in your sauna for 19 and a half minutes, uh, five times a week. Uh, that's the prescription. That's what you want them to get to. They don't start out there, but they also are able to gradually get to that by adding a sauna to their daily uh, routine. Not, oh, I got to the sauna, somebody was in my way, the appointment got canceled, traffic was... When there's so many barriers to getting them immersed in the heat, it doesn't, they, they don't do it frequently enough to really change this arrow long term. They change it for a couple of days a week, and then it goes back down to the smaller one. Okay, so that was not one, one thing that when they're stuck, they, we use heat. The second thing we do is we tear muscles. What do you mean by that? I mean that you do enough weight training in a day that you're sore the next morning. When they do the rubber bands at home and they're stretching, great. You should be sore the next morning. And when they're not, I need you to go to a coach. I need you to have somebody who's pushing you out of that comfort zone without hurting you. And that is where exercise physiology and uh, trainers are, dang, they are just a delight to add to the equation. So this stalled question is so common. That's why I spent a little extra time on that because it really changes um, how well people are able to uh, bust out of that stall. All right, last question before I head off to my conference or my event. Uh, a question about vitamins and minerals allegedly stored in the liver and fatty tissue. When losing fat, will this impact the levels of, or is the liver the biggest storage of them? You know what, fat, fat minerals are actually, especially fat-based ones, are stored in fat cells. Uh, let me go back to this, I, I keep trying to use this slide to draw. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna go to this one here. Um, so in a, in a fat cell, you will find, um, you'll find vitamin D, you'll find estrogen, estradiol actually, you'll find testosterone, uh, you will find, um, you'll find cortisol. Uh, why? Because these fat-based hormones all end up under the dictatorship of uh, insulin. When insulin is high, it pushes fat and fat-based hormones into the fat cell and it's stuck there. And it can't get out of this fat cell any better than the fat can until you lower the insulin. So when they do, in, in fact, I've, I've told this story a couple times, when, when patients have, uh, you know, have you know, worked on lowering their insulin and I tell them, check your vitamin D on day one, uh, on day uh, five, on day 10, on day 15, and day 20, uh, their vitamin D went, went up and up, up and up. And it wasn't because they were taking massive amounts of vitamin D. It's because they mobilized the storage of the, that fat-based hormone inside their fat cell. And now 
are able to, uh, to measure it outside the fat cells in their circulation because of that. You know, the other part of um, minerals are mostly stored in your bones. So when you have a mineral deficiency, it's going to rob from your bones to do a lot more, um, a lot more um, of the, um, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be stable in your blood circulation at the price of stealing it from your bones. Um, as for other toxins, you know, your liver does a great job of detoxifying that. They don't get stored in your liver. It can get stored in bile. It can get stored in fat. Um, I hope I answered that question. All right, I'm going to sign off. I would love feedback on if anybody did get uh, what, what, what you thought of where, where, your, where your fat cells are and which of the states in those slides are you at. Do you have a high insulin state and you quickly went to the, you know, the starvation? Are you in a ketogenic state but you're stalled and your fat cells are having as much input as output? Or are you... Uh, and those are often my beef and butter, my carnivore eating too much, uh, or are you in a good weight loss phase? All right, we'll see you next week, everybody.